What is up, everyone? We are live. KBN Live coming at you tonight. We are uh, happy to welcome back co-host Shane Williams. What's up, Shane? Thanks for being back in here with us after a, a few weeks at that new gig and and uh, and not being here. Yeah. But of, of course, we got Ryan down there. I am Jeff Malott, and we are proud to uh, welcome guest up, we special live. guest Matt Ramey in here. And if one of you guys got your sound up, turn it down real quick if you don't mind. Uh, if you are on here with us live right now. Uh, do us a favor and share this video. Click down there in the share button and shoot this thing out so we can uh, spread the word a little bit. Hey, uh, one of you guys have your sound on? Matt or Ryan or... If you do, make sure you sure turn it down. It's going to cause an echo. Is that All right. I think we're good. We're good. Uh, let Matt get Matt situated there, and we will roll. Uh, David Cruz, Russians hacking the sound. No, we're not. Get your up. Uh, Man, they're, they're already on my internet. They're already on my internet. Matt, we're good. Come on back in. Can you All hear right. me, Matt? All right. Yeah, hey. I'm here. So, Matt um, just got off the Hobie Lake Fork event. Uh, you set some records there for one day total. Uh, tell us a little bit about your win and about your weekend there. Man, I had a great weekend. I uh, couldn't ask for a better two days of fishing in reality. But uh, Saturday was my record-breaking day. Um, I actually didn't think I even had as much as I did. I got off the water, thinking I was like barely over 100. Broke that 101 and a quarter inch mark. That was my first ever century mark in a tournament ever. Um, so that was a great accomplishment for me. That was kind of the goal wow. for the day. Um, even Saturday, I was I could have quit around noon, honestly, on on Saturday. And I, I wanted the hundred inch mark, so I kind of stayed out and stuck it out for about another hour, fifteen minutes, and finally made my last goal. I think it was like a sixteen inch or something, and broke that hundred. So that was kind of the goal on Saturday, and then Sunday it was just to catch a limit. <laughs> now uh, I know AJ. I talked to him at the pavilion there, and he was actually holding one of your big ones that put you over a hundred, so nobody would know till the end of the day. Uh, kind of build that yeah. excitement a little bit. Yeah, he actually, uh, I mean, I, I submitted it, and um, I was like, okay, and I was like refreshing the page, and then nothing was happening. The leaderboard was going down in just a minute, and I was like, okay. And about the time I refreshed it, my text popped up, and AJ texted me, and he said, hey, we have your fish. We're on hold right now, and I was like, cool. I was like, I'm done. It was 1.15 or so. I was already paddling to the ramp um, to solidify day one. I wasn't going to stick one more fish just because my areas were very small. Uh, and you know, we were talking, uh, before we went live, uh, Shane and Ryan, I don't know if you guys realize this, but me and Matt actually started at the exact same spot on day one. We ran out to this Island and, uh, kind of talked about it and we sat there and kept our distance and, oh, sat there for what, man, an hour, hour and a half and caught one little dinker or something like that between us. Yeah, uh, I know our third partner that was on the island, he caught, he missed a couple right away, but I know I struggled for sure. I tried picking up that frog going to work. That didn't work. Spinnerbait. Um, fished, we fished a circle around that thing, and I decided to abandon that. And I know what you did about the same time I did, honestly, and I went and fished a roadbed close by. And by the time I got done with my first three hours, three and a half hours Saturday, I only had two 12-inch fish to show for it. And then I abandoned that completely. So, yeah, it was a... Uh, I had I thought I had better hopes for the island of ours. Yeah, that was pretty funny because when I got back and saw the leaderboard later, I was like, "What the hell? I should have followed him." I went and loaded up. <laughs> I actually I, I got lucky with that. Um, well, I say lucky, but I left that <laughs> spot and then I went down to my first area, first dock. There was some grass around it. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to start here. I was like, I already wasted my first three hours of my day. I'm going to salvage what I can. I only got two keepers. And like third cast into that very first grass mat, I caught that 21 and a quarter, my biggest fish of the weekend. I like my third pitch. And then that set the tone for the rest of the day. Um, had a limit pretty quick after that. Nothing big. And then I finally made it to one small stretch uh, where I caught those four or my other three over 20, I got to that spot pulled up and it was just like every 
15 yards. I was going super slow at this time, so it would take me about 20 minutes, 30 minutes to go about 15, 20 yards, making a ton of punches. And then it just every time I stuck one, they stayed on the grass, they pinned, and I got them in the boat. So I was very lucky. That's insane. So you basically got 100 inches in about two and a half, three hours. Yeah, went from Jeez. 24 inches to calling both of those. And from 10, 15, I think my first one was at, and I had my four over 20 by about 12, 15. And then I made a pretty big paddle through my area to go to a very specific spot, like third spot in that, that grass mat. I caught an 18.75, and I knew I broke 100 because at that point I had like 98 or 99 on the leaderboard with a 15 and something. So I knew I called up to 100, so I turned around right then and I left. So had you pre-fished those mats previously or is this just kind of roll the dice and that's how it worked out um i've pre-fished these before in like the toc events and then uh with our memorial day weekend the family and i we already in west texas i made my way to lake fork on monday and i fished for about two hours on tuesday and i caught a few i never caught the size um i absolutely didn't catch anything over 16 all day tuesday back there but I knew I was getting a lot of bites. Um, so I, I knew I could at least go fill a limit there. Didn't know anything about size until I figured out um, an area that was just holding big ones. So you were punching with like a 10 ounce weight. Is that right? Is that, is that what we I had? That, that's what it hurt. I looked like a 10 ounce weight. Uh, I was actually throwing a one and a quarter ounce flipping jig. Um, and it never made it through the grass mat. So like eight out of ten times, it never made it through the mat. Really? Um, it was just so thick. But when I did make it through the mat, you could almost guarantee that one was going to come up and get it. So I kind of stuck with that all day Saturday. I caught my 101 on a, a jig, flipping that. And uh, Tuesday, or not Tuesday, um, Sunday, I went to a two-ounce tungsten, and I was flipping that. And that actually made me more efficient trying to get a limit on Sunday just because I made it through the grass nine out of 10 times at that point went from two to 10 to nine to 10 on Sunday. And I think that's where I was actually beneficial in time management on Sunday. Was it woo tungsten? No, it was 10 bear baits. All right. All right. All right. I you made it. <laughs> now, what'd you have on the back of that on Sunday? Were you throwing a specific uh, plastic or something on there? Um, no, I, I actually was throwing mostly striking. <laughs> nope. It's just a bear hook. <laughs> just, yeah, just, um, Whatever so I found on, in my tackle box. On Saturday, I went through, I think, four packs of Strike King Rage Menaces, and it was in the exact color I wanted, and I was on the boat ramp on Sunday morning going to launch, and I remembered I ran out of all of a specific color. So I ran to my, my trailer. I pulled out my extra Strike King bag. I only had one color. And then I had like VMC. I had Yum. I had like four different brands. I grabbed all of them and then took them all. And on Sunday, I just went through probably five different packs of plastics. Like it was bad. So it was the, it was the location. What was that, Ryan? Say, Have you ever tried live shiners? <laughs> They're deadly down here in Florida, man. Not live shiners, but I have tried water dogs. All right. Okay. I don't know water what Water dogs is, but... work real well. That must cool. be a Texas thing. I don't know what a water yeah. dog is. Uh, it's uh, it's a unmetamorphosis. Like, it's just a mat unmature salamander. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Easy. Met metamorphosis. Yeah. I don't know about that. Now on day two, you had you had a good day, but you lost a giant day two that made it got you near a hundred on day two also, didn't you? I did. So I fished a new grass mat um, in my area. I, it was in the same different pocket, but same location. And I flipped into one grass mat. And at this point, I was still throwing the jig. Uh, I stuck this fish and she just barreled out of, the grass mat and the worst thing for me on my bite was if the fish left the grass i was gonna lose that fish it was such a big hook i think that's like a seven knot hook and it. it's just a gigantic hook Eesh. and 
as big as I was like as a hole had punch, they would throw that jig. And she just barreled out of the grass mat. I couldn't keep her pinned underneath it like all the other fish. Um, on Saturday, once I hit them, I could get them to the grass mat, and then they would just lay there. And then I would lay across the front hatch of my Hobie, and I would just <laughs> find their bottom lip and grab them, and then I had to deal with the mess in the boat. But that was the way I wanted it. And then I lost probably one of those seven or eight pounds. I was pretty upset because at this point it was like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I only had two scorable fish. And I knew that that was the fish that could lose me the event probably. So I actually gained my composure a little bit. I fished around and I caught two more little ones. I turned around after I fished for about an hour and I was like, I got to go punch that hole one more time. Pulled up to it. And at this point, as soon as I lost that fish, I cut the jig off, put a two ounce flip and set up on. And I first flip in that, that exact grass mat. I caught a, about a six pounder. Um, I just I didn't see a hook hole in her mouth where I caught the last one. So I just think there was two big ones sitting in that area. Uh, I probably caught five or seven within 10 feet of that one spot. So there was just a stack of them in there. And there was two big fish, one I missed, one I got. So Joey Ooh. Randall, he's pretty new to fishing. Uh, he was wondering if the fish were buried in the grass or were they like on the edges of the map? So they were buried in the map. Um, pretty deep in there. Yeah, uh, the first, I mean, it just depends on where you're at. If the bank narrowed to the, or if the grass narrowed to the bank, then you were looking, you know, right in the middle. But if the grass was 20, 30 feet or the whole cove, all I was looking to do was get inside the grass. There was a lot of guys in my area on Sunday um, that were flipping the edge. Um, and they were still catching fish, but they just didn't have the size associated with it. Um, so burying that jig through the mat, was where those big ones were protected. They just felt bit easier, and it was just kind of a technique with a little bit of depth. So I wasn't necessarily looking for just grass. I needed some depth under it uh, so those fish could move around and travel. I think that was the key as well because I went through the same grass mats just for six, seven hours both days. Now, you didn't have a bridge come into play in this victory on Lake Fork, did you, whatsoever? There was no bridge there. No bridge? All right. No, I didn't think so. I was a long ways away from it. I know Christine so, went up under a bridge and set a PB. That was pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. Was cool. Now, you came from New Mexico, and you've been to Fork a few times. Uh, and you said you had never had a limit in a tournament out there before, right? That's correct, Jeff. So I've been to three TOCs. So well, call them right uh, off. Then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, me and my dad have fished two or three big bass splash events there. Uh, my dad's a bass boat guy. I'm the kayak guy. And even then, I mean, I never had caught an over with him or barely even one that made a money slot check at a big bass splash. So going into Saturday was the first time on Lake Fork I'd ever feel the limit. And it was 101 to five. So I'll, I guess I'll take that yeah. as best as it can get. Yeah. Matt, what did you, um, what was your process when you lost that big fish on Sunday and, and you thought potentially that may have been a, a tournament changing mistake? Um, what did you do to kind of get your head back in the game at that point and pull it off? So that was the moment I realized that because even that morning, I'll backtrack a little bit just to like kind of make my process clear on what I did. I, I had five bites in the first 10 minutes of my day and all five bit the feathers off the gym with the cloud cover that came in the different weather pattern, something was off. Um, I got one fish in the boat that was like 14 and then I got an 18 and then the third fish was that big one. And I just, for whatever reason, they didn't seem to be eating it the same way. It was just a different bite. Uh, the day before, they would, like, take the rod out of my hand. The next day, it was like a wet sock. So I lost that big one. I cut that jig off. And then I went to uh, – did I lose you guys? Okay. Then no, we, you're good. Back. Um, I cut that jig off, and then I put a two-ounce weight on. And I just bought the two-ounce weight the night before – pulled it out of my spare box i should say I, i've always had it but uh when i did that it was all about efficiency at that point at 10 o'clock i was like i have to get through the mat as many times as i can before 2 yeah. 30 if i do that i'm gonna pull a limit and i'm gonna find some size along the way 
I knew it would happen. I just had to stick them. And that's what I really keyed in on. Once I started getting through the mat, my confidence went up right after that. I caught a limit like real quick. I went to that two ounce tungsten, pulled up to a corner grass edge, caught two, went down the bank, caught one more, went back, had my limit. I was calm, flipped in there on that six pounder and I stuck her and got her in the boat. And then I knew I was good to go. You want to tell us a little bit about your setup, so, rod and reel and that kind of thing? So the rod that I never left my hand was a, a Dobbin Sierra flip it heavy flipping stair, or like extra heavy, actually, 7'6", um, an absolute pool cue, 65-pound, Suffix 832 braid, straight braid all the way. Um, and then I had a loose speed spool reel on that rod, I believe, one of the – I can't even remember what one it is, but uh, just straight braid, short, compact, real low profile, really, I should say, and just put it to them best I could. Man, it you works. have a local club. That was the only rod I used with? all two days. Say that again. I do Ryan. actually fish the. We have a trail. Go ahead, Ryan. Or, no, you're good. Okay. Uh, so we have a local trail that me and a buddy, Philip, uh, started. About three years ago, it's Eastern New Mexico kayak fishing. Uh, we just basically try to space out our lakes. We're very limited on lakes. We really only have like six or seven lakes that we can fish in the state of New Mexico. And we started with that and um, been doing that for three years now. And we have pretty good growing in New Mexico. Kayak fishing is actually starting to take uh, a place in it and it's starting to grow and really become competitive now, which is really nice. So uh, we actually had five people from New Mexico at this event at Lake Fork. So we, um, we actually had a group go. It was, it was a better turnout than I thought. Usually I'm the only one that kind of makes those big travels and we had a good group show up. So it was nice to have some extra home support and some guys and friends there to watch me win. How many did y'all have from Arkansas, Jeff? We had uh, 13 guys, 12 or 13 guys come down. And I know we had five of us get into the top 15. A couple of us qualified for TOC. One of us was on the outside looking in like a chunk right there on the edge. <laughs> did, any, did any of you guys try to, like, chase anybody off from ramps or anything, do you know? Yeah, I saw Clifton made a message there. Uh, I don't know the whole story about the ramp, but I know my, my guy, uh, Garrett Morgan, had a little confrontation with a, with a fella at, at area he was fishing. I don't know exactly where he was fishing, but I know it wasn't very big. Uh, and I don't know if you know the story of the national championship, but Garrett had a guy come in on him day two and uh, cover up some of his water there. And, and with with him in the running here and the guy coming into his area, now I don't know how big it was, like I said. Uh, he asked him to, to move off. I don't know the story about load up and move ramps, but I know he asked him to give him some space and give him some, some room in that area because he was in contention and the guy was in 50th place or something. You know what I mean? So what are y'all's yeah, thoughts on that? What are you supposed to do there? The national championship, didn't he? Yeah, but he was in. You know, he had that big run on day two and was it was up there, uh, top ten or something like that, going into day three. Uh, and anyway, he had a guy bent Ron patterned him down there at Caddo, and you'll sit on one couple of his trees when he after he'd caught a fish, so he wasn't about to let that happen again. Uh, what are y'all's thoughts on that? I mean, what, what would you do if you had a guy come in on your area and you're up there in the running? Man, I'd probably just call, I don't know, probably Clifton or Jim and put them on speakerphone and, you know, just let them calmly explain the situation and, and see if we could come to a, a amicable agreement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clifton Allen says there's more to the story in his little hashtag there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. The story I got was Clifton sent his boy over there to block his spot. That's the story I got. See if he comments on that. But uh, did, did you guys have anybody get in on you, uh, Matt, where you were fishing? Any, any problems trying to get, get tight or get in on the grass you were fishing? Um, in reality, there was only like three guys on Saturday back there. Um, I might have missed some people that – came in early on saturday that were doing something similar or a pattern back there but on saturday afternoon there was like probably three or four of us i know uh a handful but on sunday there was seven or eight people um there was a lot of people that 
that saw what I was doing. And in all reality, I didn't actually care that they were doing anything close to what I was doing because nobody was punching mats, um, just hands down. Nobody had the setup. Nobody was throwing nobody a two-ounce tungsten with them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just – they were <laughs> flipping the grass eggs. Yeah, and the points and stuff. So I actually wasn't worried. I mean, I fished around numerous guys. There was one gentleman that fished an area with me. He was a good – he was respectful, uh, had sportsmanship. We we talked. You know, I told him I lost a giant. He told me he lost one that morning. Um, I never I never just got frustrated. I just knew people were going to do it, uh, but nobody was punching the way I was. So I knew my pattern was safe no matter what. Did that uh, camera boat rolling in on you kind of reveal where you were at and send some people up there on Sunday, you think, or no, no big deal? No, I actually don't think it did. Uh, I, I didn't have any problem. I told those guys to post whatever they wanted. Um, uh, I'm there fishing for them, and what, what they need to make our sport grow is publicity and on-the-water action and stuff, and, and I didn't feel like it would hurt me any, any bit, honestly. So I wanted those guys to do whatever they felt comfortable with doing i mean they were all respectful i couldn't give enough props to the guys at hobie that ran that event they constantly were trying to protect me and my spot and my setup and everything and i was just like you guys do whatever y'all feel comfortable doing i'm game for it and uh i have the greatest respect for those guys and what they did that was i enjoyed the boat being there every time the boat pulled up i stuck a good one so i couldn't complain honestly was this the first time you've ever fished a hobie event that was my first Toby event, and it yeah, was what, an yeah, absolute amazing event. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there it was none, none compared to it. Honestly, it was so streamlined. It was just fast in, in and out. Uh, everything was very detailed. Like those guys know what they're doing. They ran a good show. They got us in, got us out, and they got us all home safe, as I see it. So I'm great. I can't wait to make another one. I just think uh, I think the next one at what is it, Gunnersville? I think that's like probably 16 hours. So there's no way, but uh, oh, come on out, man. It'll be fun. I, I can't wait. To That's going to be a good time there. That's going to be a good one. All right, send me some fuel money. <laughs> you just made all kinds of fuel yeah. money, man. I'll break you off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but uh, uh, actually, when is Gunnersville? It's in September, I think. Uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's no way. I get actually, I get married on September 14th this year, so. Gunnersville is just out. The rest of the season. Honeymoon, uh, bro. Come honeymoon on. in Alabama. <laughs> no, I need to. No yeah. more romantic place no, than that's... Scottsboro, Alabama. I'm telling you. Hey, that's right. Yeah. There's a pink pony in Huntsville. You should Google that. A pink pony? <laughs> Don't yeah. do it. Do not Google, Google that. that. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like the Hustler down in uh, Shreveport. Mm. Oh, Lord. Shane. So I definitely shouldn't look it up. Yeah, for sure. Hard pass. Pe- people's hats. People's hats still smell like that place. <laughs> Corey Dryer's <laughs> on the road now. <laughs> Dang, we lost him on that one. He bailed out. Oh, oh there he is. He came back. <laughs> his wife just cut his internet off. Yeah, she said, "See." <laughs> uh, so yeah, Matt, you did a great job there. I know you're looking forward to the TOC this fall. I know you know AJ's talking about you know there's murmurs of more opens next year and expanding this thing a little bit so you know maybe they can get you get you one out towards new mexico if you guys are growing that sport out that way be nice to have an open out west i know um i don't know how good the cali one did i'm not sure if they're gonna go back out that far or not but um looking forward to it expanding because i'm like you i think it's a professionally run deal uh they treat the anglers right and everybody had a blast yeah, every single event. I mean, every event they put on is just—it's like clockwork. I mean, they—they yeah. they really do have. They have it dialed in. I mean, I know there's going to be growing pains. You know, they—they they started, you know, just having a couple events, and, and they expanded some this year. But I'd really love to see them expand into like a regionalized, you know, almost a, a trail style where they have multiple events throughout the year. Because you know, if you look, they missed a good part of the spring in between events, like. It, it, yeah. waiting on Kentucky yeah. Lake. So yeah. I think if, if they had events every month or so, I, I would definitely, that's, you know, that's where I would be. <laughs> yeah. No question. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. I actually, I have me and my buddy that went to Lake Fork. Uh, he texted me and he's like, I'm making at least three of those events next year. 
And I was like, I'll load up with you. I was like, we'll put the PAs on the trailer and let's go. Um, so we're going to look to travel next year and we're going to make Hobie events before anything else. That's awesome. You know, one more little note on that event on Fork. I don't know if they're going to go back there next year or not, but I think the number of 20 inch and over fish over two days was 45. Uh, 45 some, and I got five of them. Yeah, 45 and <laughs> you had five of them, you dirty dog. Humble brag. Yeah, you sure did. Uh, and there, in practice, there were some more. There was a couple over 24 caught in practice, I believe. I, I know Garrett Morgan caught one. Guillermo caught one. Uh, maybe yeah, one or two more caught. Friday, man. I think Christine caught one on, was that in the event? Yeah, she caught a 23 and a half on Saturday. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, up that way as well. So there were some big fish caught. That was wild to, to see that in, uh, you know, over a little two-day event Jeff like that. Jeff Sherwood with, caught one. Jeff Sherwood from uh, Taos, he caught one over 10 on Friday, I think. It was a 10-pounder on a frog. Wow. That was awesome. Big fish flying in all over the place. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully they go back there. It's one of my favorite lakes. I loved going to that TOC in the fall every year, but I tell you what, I loved fishing it in June a lot better. So I'd love to see another May, June event there. Uh, David me Cruz. And Ry, me and Ryby are going to pull up to the next one. What's that? I said me and Ryby will pull up to the next Lake Fork yeah. event. Yeah. Cr David Cruz is down there begging for Sam Rayburn. And is it strange to y'all that there hasn't been – a giant kayak event on Sam Rayburn yet? Cause it's always ranked in one of the top five, you know, one of the top five lakes in the country. Yeah. Is it just a uh, lack of support there or lack of a big city? Why do you think there hasn't been one? I mean, it's not, it's right down the road from. It's like Toledo Bend Beach. area. 30 yeah. minutes from Toledo Bend, but yeah. I know it's just so much deeper. I think this might be a safety concern in the kayak just because the wind picks up there. I know Toledo Bend gets bad, but I think Sam Rayburn's like twice the depth, so the rollers get twice as big as quick. I don't, I don't know, know if that's the exact lakes, reason or not. It's but those shallow lakes that'll get you when the wind gets up. <laughs> that's true. That was the other thing about Fork. It was so weird to fish it glassy, no wind like that. Uh, usually it's like the ocean out there. But uh, moving on to a few other things, and, and we enjoy talking to Matt, and we'll get on some questions and come back to you, Matt, if, if anybody has any things. But there's some other hot topics out there that we wanted to touch on. And, Matt, we hope you chime in if you, if you have an opinion on some of this stuff. Uh, yeah, definitely. So I don't know where we want to start, but I know there was an event at the same time almost. It was early. It was kind of midweek to the weekend uh, with a little bit of controversy and, and, and some opinion, strong opinions on it. And that was the Pan Am games that just went down. Uh, what do y'all think, Ryan and Shane? What, how was that received? And, and what do y'all think about how that all shook out? Go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> uh, I mean, talking to, to some of the people that fished it, uh, they had a really good time as far as, you know, the, the anglers participating, you know, doing the dinners and getting to meet all these folks from other countries and stuff. Uh, I don't, I don't really think the event was covered very well at all. Like it was tough to, to follow along and keep up with. I know there was some talk about like last minute rule changes and, you know, led to, uh, the availability for some water that might've won the tournament or whatever. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of back and forth on there, but, uh, I mean, overall, I would like to see that number one, have more of like a qualification process. But number two, you know, if you are going to try to make that like a world championship kind of Olympic style event, I think there needs to be a whole lot more media coverage on it. You know, uh, I mean, other than just a parade through Cookville or whatever, but like some actual media coverage. Uh, I think the anglers did a great job talking about it themselves. You know, like that you saw live feeds from everybody. Uh, they worked yeah. really hard as far as putting it out there. But I'm talking about the the organization overall i heard they gave out like yard sale stickers to put on bump boards in the morning instead of identifiers like i mean i think you know if, if you're you going to have an event of that level you you can step it up do we know what the actual qualifications were was it just like a dodgeball style pick your teams i think it was a team picking yeah well, i think okay. there was a few guys that got chosen just because 
just because. And then there were some guys that, you know, there were some really good anglers on there uh, that, you know, would probably make a team if there were such a thing to qualify for or would have a chance to. Oh, no, no. I mean, when you look at the names on the list, there are some, you know, heavy hitters that, that take lunch money on about any lake they go to. Like, there's, <laughs> there's no question that there was talent on the team. Anybody see how the Godfather did in that tournament, total inches wise? Who's that? Jamie Dennison? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the grandfather. Never mind. My bad. My bad. My bad. <laughs> no, the uh, uh, yak, the yank yak, yak angler choice awards uh, angler of the year, greatest uh, kayak angler uh, of all time. I think he had uh, eight inches and eleven inches or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, eight and three quarter. Don't short him. It happens to the best of us. I don't, I don't know if the people watching this uh, realize what's going on here, but this background of Ryan's look like it's Shane's body. He's positioned right above this guy, and it is uh, it is quite, quite the scene. <laughs> that is not what's wrong. For the okay. Thank God. I thought you guys were down there. Uh, I'm safe in Florida. Uh, it was kind of distracting me from what we were trying to accomplish here, but Sorry, focus, man. yeah, focus. But yeah, even down at Fork, we were hearing about the the portage rule and last minute rule changes, and it kind of put a sour sour grapes on the event. Even with, uh, you know, the grand parade they had and the, everything that went on, it, it puts hearing about the portaging and all that kind of put sour grapes on the whole event. I thought, uh, or at least the rumors of that. Stuff yeah. like that, you you have to look out for. Like last minute rule changes that are gonna benefit somebody that's running the tournament. Like you gotta, I mean, you know, I think that's basic. I don't know. I mean, from running a local trail, like if me or Steve O made a, a last minute rule change that was gonna be semi advantageous to us, uh, that's kind of that's kind of frowned upon. I think. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's frowned on. It's never good. So we'll see where that thing goes. I mean, I know this was supposed to be a starting point for them. Uh, we'll see where it goes, is, you know, how often they're going to do it. Is there like a, a, some kind of production coming from the event? Like, is it going to be on NBC Sports or something, some kind of follow-up, or, or is that it? It's going to be on uh, ESPN 8, the Ocho, I think. The Ocho, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. Probably some YouTube channel or something like that. But, um, so, going on to the next thing, there's still been – Oh, Joey Randall wants us to explain the portage rule they changed. I can't really explain it. It just was a last-minute rule change that allowed some carrying of a. Uh, Basically, I mean, from what I heard, it was the it, the rule was no portaging the day before. They're like, all right, you can portage. You're good. The day before. Okay. That's again. Uh, I'm no I'm no up. Pan Am contender, but that's what I heard. I okay. Know. Uh, no Clifton Clifton wants back in maybe maybe in 2020 Clifton campaign for 2020 uh, yeah. maybe we can get rid of Eddie Lancer and put Clifton in there I don't think Eddie Lancer is uh, a real I meant person I tell you I already got rid of Eddie Lancer okay bad, right. Eddie's so gone? there's room yeah there's sorry room. he kind of seemed sincere about the uh, the rainbow yeah, yeah he did yeah. real sincere yeah bless his heart he apologized um uh, <laughs> Did you guys see any uh, word in the last few weeks about some judging and payout issues still going on with with uh, certain organizations? Seems like there's been some delays. Uh, I don't know. I haven't uh, gotten any payouts from KDF, so. All right. <laughs> Amen to that. Brother. Okay. <laughs> Seems like there's been uh, some delays. I don't know. So we're good. Uh, no, I think I saw Lynette put a post out uh, yesterday or day before that everything's caught up. I know I saw a post from like Robert Weicker about an online event or whatever that had, had taken a while to get paid out. I know Trey Johnson was waiting on a, a monthly payout that had, had been a little while. I don't know. I mean, they're caught up now. Hopefully, hopefully we'll stay on top of it. Uh, the judging stuff, man, uh, I know Russell Johnson had a, had a pretty – crazy deal go down up there in one of the events that he he fished like he sent the picture around to several people and and it was posted on kbn too uh it looked like it was a pretty clear 18 inch fish but was judged as 18.25 and 
the angler said they submitted it at 18, which was the strange thing behind that. I know there's an ongoing investigation about, you know, what they're going to do with it uh, right now. But, you know, there's been several, several judging snafus come up throughout the, the year. Hopefully, you know, we can hone that in. I don't know how, how that works, how many judges they have, you know, if there's like a vetting process for the judges or whatever, I think that would probably be worth looking into, you know, on their end, that would help, help out a lot. Uh, Clifton brings up a good point. Did we ever figure out the, the fish facing the wrong direction deal? Which event, that? which event are you talking about with that? Ryan, don't you remember that there was an angler that was submitting fish facing right, right? <laughs> Up against the bump board, but facing. Oh, like flip, like vertical. Yeah. Yeah. But so was still scored. I don't know, man. I didn't hear anything else about it. I heard about it initially, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know whatever came of it. That's interesting. Uh, Jim Clark I, says. May Georgia State Challenge got the same 22 inch fish twice. And as I know, is that still the case? You cannot catch the same fish twice. <laughs> I've been told. I've, I've seen doesn't that happen matter. before. Doesn't matter what kind of sharpies you got, it does not mm -hmm. matter. You can't, you how, can't how far you chop that tail off? I didn't, I didn't take my pictures with the right angle, but I mean, you gotta, well, you gotta be careful with stuff like that. That's all. That's all irrelevant now that Fluke Masters fish in Georgia online. So, boom. Never mind. Ooh. Never mind. He's that taking boy. your crown, Shane. <laughs> He's taking your crown. Natched it, yeah. And I know Don't people you. out there, they, they get a chuckle, and some of them sneer at us always banging on uh, issues that come up over there. But, I mean, what are we supposed to do? They make it easy, and we, we like to talk about funny stuff. So, uh, quit <laughs> doing that, and we'll move on to something else. Uh, <laughs> We still got, well, never mind. Yeah. Uh, I know we talked about the, uh, leading up to the show, some of the subjects, this, this seemed to be a boom in live streams, kayak fishing live streams. Uh, Boy. everybody's got one, everybody's doing it. We weren't, we certainly weren't the first to do it. I know, uh, the OG kayak bass live West Jones and those guys were doing it. And there's been a few other ones pop up here and there, but it seems like the last few months it's like, Every if you don't have one, you don't you're not doing nothing. Yeah, man, that's a cool thing to do for sure. Um, <laughs> you don't I even think have to have it working function. Part just... is we may talk about the things that uh, might be a little more unpopular in the more PC circles, uh, which I like. I hope we continue on with that. Yeah. And Matt, I don't know if you've seen any of our shows. Uh, we try to stay on topic with with events and different things, but then we jump over into some ugly stuff too, that I think needs to be talked about. And, uh, you know, we've kind of, I think we've had a little influence and impact out there with some of the things we brought up and talked about. So, you know, as raw as it can be, I think it's a good thing. No, I think it's, just, it's a great thing. I mean, pointing out the issues that we have is kayaking. There's the only way everything, anything's going to get fixed out there. So, I mean, what y'all are doing is great. I actually, I actually got added, I mean, a couple of days ago, but I went back and watched multiple videos, uh, been on, checked them all out, kind of just to get the idea and see what was happening and see what was going on in the world to try to follow a lot. But you guys know a lot more than I do. I'm a long way from the heart of a lot of, of a lot of this stuff. Well, you're welcome. With that opinion, you're welcome back anytime, Matt. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be on Jeff's, uh, Jeff's welcome post this week, then, if you joined a few days ago. That's right. Yep. It depends. Right. It, it only welcomes a hundred at a time, and it sometimes it blows by that, so people get left off. Uh, yeah, it used to be just a, a handful every week, and now it's uh, you can't really keep up with it. Oh my we've God. been yeah. on there like three times at least. <laughs> should we put up a poll to let Clifton back in or not, or how should we? Or should we just keep rolling like this? I mean, I don't mind letting Clifton back in. He's he's usually like solid contributor for like 48 seconds and then it's just <laughs> he is uh you when you talk about staying in your lane clifton's like drifting like he's just like sliding Where across both man? lanes going up <laughs> oh. <laughs> all the traffic 
And Matt, uh, I can't even see all the comments that fly through here, so I'll suggest to you later on after we we're done and this in this video is posted, scroll back through the comments or maybe a few questions you want to respond to personally or, or answer these folks because there's been some specific uh, questions about punching and different things like that. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'll get to that. I'll, I'll go back through there. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, John Arlon's back in too. <laughs> John? John and Clifton? I've changed. There's, I yeah, there's been a revelation. <laughs> there's been a revelation in the Allen household. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they straighten all the way back up. You know what? Maybe we should have them on live one night and let them plead their case. And then, uh, oh, there we oh. go. Now that's a good idea. What do you think? Yes. We I'll can bring go popcorn yeah. for that one. Yeah, we go point counterpoint and see what they say and make their make their case in front of everybody. Perfect. <laughs> Gene Bohannon just said they don't left Clifton in his hometown group, much less this group. <laughs> mean Gene. Clifton don't even get to go to Thanksgiving. He ain't got nothing going on. Hey, let me throw this out there real quick about Gene. My God, sit back down, Ryan. I don't want to see that. <laughs> uh, Everybody's under you now, Jeff. I, had to get my I know, now it's me. Man. Move that crap out of here, man. Uh, <laughs> I got to get my phone charger, too. I'm sorry. So I saw Gene Bohannon commented on there, and I want to say something about Gene and the Hobie crew real quick. Uh, one of the guys from Arkansas, Michael Sandlin, flipped his kayak trying to land a fish uh, during the tournament on Saturday. Uh, and when he did it, Gene Bohannon was nearby, saw what happened, went over there and helped him get his stuff together, and actually told him, he said, hey, man, hold still. That fish is still in the net. He actually landed a 21-inch fish after he flipped his boat. <laughs> no way. Uh, <laughs> Took a picture with it with another guy's phone. AJ let him upload because he still had his ID. It was tied to his boat. And then uh, yeah. drove back to the marina, bought a rod, went back out and limited out and had 80 inches anyway. Uh, Shut up. Uh, yeah. yeah. That was my, that was my guy, Michael Sandlin, my hero, Michael. Uh, Dude, that's hardcore. Yeah. And then, my, yeah, and then to finish the story off at the Saturday night captain's meeting, AJ and the Hobie guys, their sponsors, uh, I think it's St. Croix and Iowa, hooked him up with some new gear for what had happened. Oh, flipping his that, boat. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's first class stuff once again. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was a hilarious story, having that fish in the net and still making it happen. But uh, so, what do we got coming up for events, guys? I know you guys have some stuff, uh, I think on Chickamauga pretty yeah. soon and some other stuff coming up. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, roll so on up to Rai Rai's house here next Thursday, I guess. All right, I'll be here. Uh, so Good weekend day. after next, we got the KBF on Chickamauga. Uh, I'm sure a lot of folks will come down for that. Chick's fishing really good right now. I know I said that last time, and then there was a huge flood that washed everything out. But uh, judging by the weather, the flood's going to be this weekend, so you're good. Uh, next weekend should be fine. <laughs> Uh, uh, after the next Hobie Saint, event, the end of the month, so the yeah, Saint Clair. I'm going to try to make it up there if anybody wants to take a road trip, cruise on up, catch some smallies. You see what Jim just said? Jim Clark said he needs a new flipping rod. Going to flip his boat at the Gunnerville Gunnersville Hobie event. <laughs> <laughs> uh, poor Jim. Jim, Jim and Gunnersville don't they don't jive too well anyway. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jim will throw a rod and reel out the back of his truck in a heartbeat. He and drag it for a while, too. Mm -hmm. AJ chimed in and uh, let everybody know about the St. Clair Hobie event. Any of you guys going going up to that? Got it, dog. What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Uh, and, Ryan, you just put out – is that public yet? The tourney, tourney of Titans payout? No? Is that not public yet? So, well, I don't know. So, Tyler was supposed to put it out today out of it. I didn't see a release on it. I'll go ahead and talk about it anyway. Get my hand slapped up. Breaking news. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, man. Uh, so hey, we've, wait. Uh, we, we've, we've been working on the pay scale um, with Tyler. Like Breaking news. Never ran a big tournament before, so we're, we're kind of filling this out as we go. Um, so if it's less than 100 entries, it's going to be – it's not going to be the case. We've already got 77 people signed up. Um, if it's 100 to 140 entries, um, first place is going to be five grand with a Titan. Second place is 2,500 with a Titan. Third place is 1,500 with a Titan, and then it's going to pay uh, 250 to the next two slots, and then your entry fee 165 back 
to the top 10. So, Where it gets good, if we get to 140 to 185, same deal, five grand, 2,500, 1,500, and then it's 500 uh, down through the field. Wow. If we can somehow get over 186, fourth and fifth place are going to get 1,500 bucks too and then pay 500 out to the rest of the field. So, that's, that's uh, you know, trying to make it worth it for these guys that show up. I mean, obviously, uh, we're going to have uh, Jordan Lee, uh, Jason Lambert's probably going to come fish with us too. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's looking like we're going to have a pretty good turnout. Um, so that's, I'm, I mean, that's over eight grand in first place, you know, cash and prizes. Um, oh, yeah. That's pretty respectable. There's, there's not a lot of events that are pushing numbers like that. Plus, no, a, and I mean, awesome we're not trying there. to make this like a 500, 700 competitor event. Like we want this to be something, you know, still competitive, attainable. I, I, I would love to see between 150 and 200. I think that's a pretty uh, doable number, especially on Gunnersville in October. Uh, so, You're at 77 already, then it's, it's going to be big. Yeah, I mean, I, I like it. I, I like where we're at on the numbers right now. Yeah. No, that's going to be so much fun. Is it fish good in October? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you like you like Some. frogs, boy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Nope. Trying to show this for uh -oh. Clifton. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Well, I got right. some. There you go. That's what a curly that? tail grub. That's all I'm going to throw. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> On a two ounce uh, tungsten. Two ounce hey, tungsten, you go. curly tail grub. <laughs> Matt, Chris Holland's going to come fish it. That's cool. I haven't seen Chris in a long time. I don't uh, know. If so, this is why this John way. Allen, this is why John Allen will not ever get back into KBN. He says, Christopher Anglin's going to come smash y'all on Gunnersville. Come on, man. That's like saying Rich Strecker Roast is going to come smash us. Like, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> I like the enthusiasm, though. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Need a little side bet. Need some side bets going for that thing. I'm down. I got a little bit of lunch money. Let's do right. it. Now, Matt, you have anything coming your way soon out on the west west side of the country? Uh, anything near you? What you got? Um, I was gonna go. Well, I had all everything invested in Lake Fork. I actually made TOC. That was the goal. Um, so I'm not going to Pueblo, Colorado, to fish the satellite event by Hobie, even though. They run such a good event, but now I don't have to travel that far. But I've got two – I got a West Texas event coming up, West Texas kayak fishing. Um, and then I've got – I think that one's on EV Spence. And then I have a local – our local trail is going to be up at Conscious Reservoir um, in the month, 29th of this month. So I got two of those coming up this month that I'll be getting out there to fish and see how I'm doing on those. Conscious will be fun this year. Heard a lot of big small mouth are being caught, so – should be a good event. Yeah, good times. Uh, TOC is going to be something. I wanted to know what your opinion was on the West Texas uh, Club Trail. Whatever. Sorry. The West Texas Trail is yeah. a great group of people. I mean, yeah. they run a great show. They're a bunch of great people, friendly. Uh, I have the highest respect for them, and I fish every one of their events, and uh, I, I do everything I can to make their events. They, they do a great job. Awesome. A lot better than those East Texas boys, huh? <laughs> uh, they're all good. I think there's just a couple bad uh, apples. Yeah. A couple bad apples. <laughs> Want to name some names? <laughs> no, there's some good. good it's only one name, Texas. but it's the last name. <laughs> yeah, that's no doubt. I got your charger in here. Well, you guys got anything else, else for Matt or for the group before we wrap this thing up here in a minute? Uh, so, me and myself and Scott Booty Jar are going to try this. We're going to try this uh, Westbrook Friday thing tomorrow. Uh, if you guys want to tune in, I know Scott's really excited about the interview. We He put in some prep work, did some digging, got a lot of good stuff he wants to talk about. So, right up on you. Tune into that. We're going to try to, yeah, we're going to try to get it going. All right. He got his mic, mic issue worked out, whatever the heck was going on. So, so he tried to do it from uh, from from Westbrook, like the shop. Uh, I went by there yesterday afternoon, and I don't know. He had never done it from there before, so I'm assuming that's kind of what the problem stemmed from. But he's going to be back at home and is in the studio laying down some tracks, and we're going to oh. 
Uh, we're going to do that live joint tomorrow. <laughs> well, I know how, uh, I think we remember the, the great Lake Fork debacle when I tried to live stream from down there. So you never know how it's going to go when you're not at home. <laughs> Uh, so I feel his pain that, that can happen to you. Um, Matt, you got anything before we get out of here? You want to thank any sponsors you had for that, that event win or, or give us your Insta handle, any social media stuff that you want to share with everybody? Yeah, definitely. Uh, my first two are 10 bear baits. Um, they're my tackle provider for tungsten and some jigs that I hand tie some skirts on. So I throw that bait a lot of uh, that company. And then uh, Z Kayak Outfitters, uh, they're at Elephant Butte, New Mexico. They're my Kobe dealer, and that's where I do all my business. So if anybody's ever in New Mexico and needs a Hobie shop or kayak shop, get out to Z Kayak Outfitters. They'll help you out. They're great people. Uh, Russ and Edna Traeger, they're just awesome. So um, Good deal. Yeah, that's really – that's all I have. I mean, uh, nothing like that. And so if anybody wants to follow me, Instagram is – at Wayne Ramey, W-A-Y-N-E-R-A-M-E-Y, and then uh, just Matt Ramey on Facebook. All right, brother. Do we you, appreciate you taking you the time, man. I can, can I shoot an elk out there? Do you know where I can shoot an elk in New Mexico? Uh, pretty much anywhere in the state of New Mexico. Uh, if you need, just message me. I can put you on some other ones. Uh, nice. One of my buddies that actually went to Fish Lake Fork, he's a guide up here in New Mexico. So we can, nice. uh, okay. there? we got a lot of good elk hunting. So we can help Come you on. out with that. See there? Making connections right here on KBN Live. Don't point at Shane's bass junk. Don't do that again. <laughs> so. uh, but, yeah, Matt, that's we, we, we yeah, that's bad. We appreciate you, brother, uh, taking the time. I know it's been a, a long road home from uh, Texas over the weekend, and we, we're so happy to have Shane back on the Hollywood Squares here tonight uh, chiming in with us. So check out Ryan tomorrow night, and we'll see you guys again in two weeks. Uh, we are gone. See you. Thanks, guys. Tomorrow.